Hello, everyone. I hope you guys can hear me. Um, I'm Larissa, and uh, today we're going to talk about tailored deployment strategies, Argo rollouts for diverse applications. But first, a little bit about myself. I'm a computer scientist with the Adobe Experience Platform Group. I've been mostly developing backend services, but I've always had an interest in automation. And in the last year and a half, I worked at uh, updating our CI CD pipelines with tools such as Argo CD, Argo workflows, events, and rollouts. Today, we're going to talk about a use case of the last one, namely Argo rollouts. In experience platform, we've always had a focus on quality. Uh, every change that we make, we actually uh, take that through a series of various checks and validation before it goes to production. And everything is automated, of course. So you can see on, on the screen uh, all the checks that we employ before we merge the PR. Uh, and we have we start with a basic code verification. Then we go on and do a series of uh, static analysis from vulnerability checks to license checks to code analysis checks and security scans. And if everything checks out, we then go out, go on and uh, deploy that code into an ephemeral environment and run a battery of comprehensive functional tests against it. We do all of these things to basically reduce the risk improve confidence in our releases and uh, reduce change failure rate. When it comes to deployment, we employ a staggered approach. We have multiple environments up to production and we deploy the code in each of these environments and then test it. An automatic uh, promotion to the ne next environment or an automatic rollbacks have a rollback happen based on the result of the deployment and the test. And in production, we're even more careful and we deploy in groups starting with smaller regions first and continuing with the larger ones. Again, we do all this because we want to reduce the risk, we want to reduce the change failure rate, and we want to basically reduce the blast radius in case there is an issue. So you may be thinking that we're doing a lot of checks, right? And this should be good enough. Actually, it isn't. Um, because on one hand, as a growing business, Experience Platform is looking at increasing its footprint and expecting to open up new regional deployments around the world. And with new regions, we'll have multiple parallel deployments, right? We cannot just deploy everything sequentially. It will take us too long. And yeah, monitoring them, it will become more complex. And on the other hand, we'll always, always be focused on stability. And although we, we employ a lot of checks, there are some uh, use cases where the area of impact might be pretty big. So this was our motivation into looking into progressive deployment. And of course, the simplest answer to that question was Argo rollouts. Why? Because it's cloud native, because it's very easy to learn and understand. Uh, and basically lets you configure every type of progressive deployment out there. But this thing of rollout being very flexible in terms of what you can configure raises the question, what do we configure for our use case? Uh, what's the best strategy? And it was important for us to leverage the existing mechanism that we had today, like the test. Uh, now I'm going to walk you through a simplified view of a feature. We have an experience platform, which is called Audit. And we'll use the components implementing these features um, as our test subject. So today, this is implemented like this. Uh, we have events produced on a Kafka topic, which are being uh, consumed, processed, and ingested into a data store by this Kafka consumer component. From the data store, they are exposed uh, through this RESTful web service. It's important to state that both these microservices are both backwards and forwards compatible to each other. When it comes to testing that post-deployment test I was talking about earlier, we are actually testing the entire system. 
So our functional tests generate data on the Kafka topic and they uh, validate the entire system's behavior through that RESTful web service. These tests are packaged in a container and they run as a Kubernetes job in the CI-CD pipeline. So let's see how we can apply rollouts to each of these components. And we'll start with the RESTful web service, which is a very good candidate for rollouts with blue-green uh, deployment strategy. Uh, why? Because it can be tested without any live traffic and we are going to reuse some of the tests we already have to do this testing. So we need to split up the test a bit and have a dedicated container uh, for, with component tests for this API. These tests will be then referenced in an analysis template similar to what you see on the screen. The important thing to, to note here is that the RESTful web server URL needs to be uh, added as a parameter and it needs to uh, point to the preview service that's targeting the preview pods, basically the, the green part of a blue-green deployment. Uh, this analysis is then referenced by the rollout spec and it's referenced as a pre-promotion analysis, meaning that uh, Rollouts, the rollout con controller is instructed to make sure to run this test against the preview service before the preview service is promoted and receives any live traffic. Therefore, if there is an issue that can be captured through testing, we'll have no impact here. Another thing to notice here is that the preview replica count is set to one. Uh, this will help us not use too many resources when we run both the blue and the green deployments side by side, and we're basically spinning just a single pod. Um, we also, you, you can see that we don't set the replica count here because this rollout is managed by a horizontal pod autoscaler. HPA works great with rollouts because it will manage only the um, active, the, the replicas of the active replicas so that's actually receiving uh, live traffic. A takeaway from here is this approach is very similar to what we do with pre-prod environments. What we call the pre-prod was actually an environment very similar to production in terms of configuration, but it did not receive any live traffic, just a synthetic one. And the scope of pre-prod environments was to test basically production configuration with zero impact. But of course, pre-prod environments are expensive to run because Alongside a new deployment of the service, they require additional resources, like in our case, a database. Uh, while you can get the same amount of validation basically with the blue-green, uh, and you, you will be running just a double amount of pods just before the cutover. Um, until that point, because we said that preview replica count one, we, you're, we're just using yet another pod. Now, let's see how, um, what strategy can we apply to the streaming application to that Kafka consumer? So if I were to apply the same strategy, blue-green, and to create a new version of my application with the same configuration as, as the first one, uh, and this version would act as my green part of my blue-green, blue or actually my, my yellow in the, the picture, then I would have mistakenly deployed a canary because if I deploy the same configuration on both versions of the application, they will share the same consumer group. And as a consequence, they will share the traffic that comes through that Kafka topic. So let's say I, I change the consumer group. I intentionally change that. Then I will not be able to promote anymore my V2 application because the whole idea with using Blue Green is to, able, to be able to promote a new version to be the stable one, but if it has a different configuration than the stable one, I, I cannot promote it anymore. So because Blue Green is all about bringing new instances and test them without receiving any live traffic, it, there's no fit here. Well, you can say, okay, expose that new version of the application to the traffic through a canary and test it like this. Unfortunately, this doesn't quite work as well because of the same reason of shared consumer groups. 
I cannot uh, target the V2 pods, which are my canary pods here, with the test traffic because both the live traffic and the test traffic are shared by both my stable and my canary deployments. So I, I have no guarantee that I'm actually testing the, the canary deployment. So what we ended up doing is a canary, but with metric analysis. So all my pods are exposing a HTTP endpoint for metrics, which is being scraped by a Prometheus instance. And the canary is running with the live traffic. And we are assessing how well it's doing by using some key metrics. The key metrics uh, for our use case are error rate, which should not be greater than 1%. Uh, the error rate in our system means that we are not able to process the messages and we are parking them on a dead letter queue. And the second metric just uh, assesses that we are actually producing event to that data store. You can see that both metrics have an initial delay of one minute to allow for the canary pods to be up and running and to also allow for a first consumer group rebalance as the canary pod is being added to the consumer group. These two metrics are then um, referenced from the rollout spec of my Kafka consumer rollout. Uh, and they are referenced as a background analysis, meaning that they will run for the entire duration of the rollout. But how do we exactly, um, how do we exactly uh, scrape those metrics and collect metrics from the, the canary pods? I could use uh, a service monitor, which would target the canary service. This will correctly identify my canary pods during a rollout. However, when the rollout is promoted uh, to the stable version, to the stable ser version, um, I have an issue because the canary service will point basically to my stable pods too, because canary service is using rollout pod template hash to target the pods, as, and the pod template hash will stay the same after uh, the rollout is promoted because there is basically no ch no change in the Back. So, in this case, my second service monitor will actually point to the stable pods and will collect data from my stable version of the application. Apart from the issue that we are basically duplicating metrics, I have another issue if I want to run a new rollout because um, depending on the time window I use, my first data points might be skewed because they ha actually have data for the, from the stable service. So an alternative to this would be to use a feature from rollouts uh, called ephemeral metadata, which lets you basically define in the spec labels and annotation to attach to the canary respective to the uh, stable pods. Of course, of interest to us is the canary met metadata here. Uh, which will be added by the rollouts uh, during the, the canary. Then I can leverage a pod monitor, which selects based on the labels, labels I just added, uh, only the pods that are part of the canary deployment. The good part with this approach is when the canary gets promoted, uh, my pod monitor will not select any of the pods anymore because all the pods have the label stable as the canary label was an ephemeral one. Now let's go some, uh, some uh, let's see some of the takeaways we've got from this uh, running rollouts with uh, analysis for streaming application. The first one was about how long to run the canary for. Uh, of course, it depends uh, on the application. Uh, the answer is enough for the metrics to be scraped and enough to collect sufficient data, data points for your analysis. In our case, um, because it's a moderate traffic application, uh, an interval, and we're scra scraping every 15 seconds, uh, anywhere to five to 10 minutes in, it's enough to assess that this rollout is okay or not. Uh, another thing to take into consideration here is 
how frequent, frequent you do changes to that application. Because if you're running rollouts for days and you have frequent changes to the service, you might still want to test each change at a time. So uh, the speed delivery will be basically reduced. Another takeaway here was about the interval to compute metrics on because we need to be aware of uh, consumer rebalances, which happen every time we add new canary pods. Uh, so time windows short, like one minute, might not be enough because you still need to wait for the uh, rebalance to finish and also for the metrics to be collected. Uh, another takeaway is though metrics do help us reduce impact, when we're talking about rolling out a new application, they are not comprehensive enough to test the entire functionality of the deployment. So they are not a replacement for test. So this is actually a second reason that we want to fail fast and run that rollout for such a short time is because we still have tests up afterwards to run. Uh, so um, we are still running the component tests for this component, but also the tests for the entire system post deployment. And a final note I wanted to make um, is running Argo rollouts with Argo CD. So, and especially discuss the rollbacks use case. So as you know, rollbacks, uh, Argo rollouts will roll back uh, your code if there is an issue by scaling down the replica set which has issues and scaling up the stable one. Uh, we actually do more than that. Uh, we follow closely GitOps principle and basically we reflect that change back into Git through a Git revert. Uh, there are multiple reasons why you want to do this. Uh, one of them would be that if the rollback is retried without having a fix for it multiple times, and if that rollback is producing some, producing some in, uh, impact with Canary, for, for example, uh, then you will basically be multiplying that impact with the retries you're making. Another uh, reason to do this is you usually don't know what happened when a rollback do ha does happen uh, with rollouts. So you might want to roll back all the other regions you have in production until you figure out what's the root, root cause and if it's actually a configuration issue or it's more than that. This was all from me. Uh, if you have any questions, there is a mic up there. If not, we can take it um, after the, the talk. Thank you.